Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by Jiffy Steamer, the largest steamer manufacturer in the world. It started in 1940 right here in O'Brien County, Tennessee. Find the Jiffy Steamer dealer closest to you at jiffysteamer.com. Thank you, Emily, and welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Emily, before I introduce today's special guest, what is something you've discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? During World War II, men from the region weren't just sent off to the war. It actually came to Union City itself with the opening of Embry-Riddle Airfield, which was a training site for pilots. That is, I've actually seen that um, display out there before. I think that's fascinating. The photos that go with it are really cool. Um, and it's so so ironic that you're talking about um, flight and um, airports because we've got a very special guest today, Connor Rinker, who is a certified flight instructor at Full Stop Aviation. He's going to tell us a little bit about him and what he's up to. And every once in a while, we're going to get Luke to chime in. Luke usually hovers in the background, but he is also now a certified pilot after going through uh, flight training and all that. So we're going to hear, we're going to learn all about what this is about. So welcome, Connor. Yeah. Good morning, uh, guys. Scott, great to be here and I look forward to it. So talk us to us a little bit about where are you from? Where did you grow up? I was uh, a local boy, so I grew up in Reeves, Tennessee, which is not so far down the road, and uh, kind of spent my uh, young life and going into adult life all in the Union City area, um, and then getting into college, I uh, went to Martin at, at UT Martin, so it was a good experience. I obviously, I wanted to leave the nest, and uh, it just came a little later for me, uh, as as in when I graduated college, I I went to Houston, Texas and, and, uh, got that sense of freedom and financial responsibility and all the things that kids want for some reason. And, um, but yeah, at my heart, I was a Obine County uh, guy and, uh, I, I love it. Love it even more after leaving and, and realizing all the great things we have in this County. And so what, what did you major in at UT Martin? Uh, business management with a minor in marketing. So it was, a little bit on the slacker side of things as far as majors go. Not engineering or anything impressive like that, but but I learned a lot nonetheless. And uh, the business school over there is really a good program. A lot of good good uh, professors and uh, ones that aren't afraid to, to talk to you if you have a break in between classes or anything. So it was nice getting to know some of them. Well, I would dare say that you probably use your uh, degree in marketing and business much more right now than you would if you'd majored in biology. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, needless to say, I did not know that this was coming in college. I wish I had that foresight, but it worked out really well. And, and uh, God clearly had a plan, but I, I, it, it worked out really well. And, and uh, I got all the background information in college that I needed to not be completely in the dark in this business. It's now, when you went off to Texas, uh, what kind of field were you working in when you headed like Davy Crockett? You told everybody else where they could go and you went to Texas. Yep. Yep. So I was, um, as in what, what did I do down there yeah. for the most part? Uh, so right out of college, I knew I didn't want a big boy job. So I'd gotten my private, uh, in helicopters at the time and, um, knew that airplanes were the more, I guess, profitable route. And that's all my mind was thinking about at the time. So I wanted to switch to airplanes. And uh, we had a family family friend who had a flight school down in uh, Houston, Texas, LaPorte, Texas, is the, the airport. And she took me in and kept me in her back room for a couple months while I, while I got the uh, private in single engine land and then on to commercial instrument CFI, which is the certified flight instructor and all that fun stuff. Um, and that was kind of my career change where, where everything kind of twisted into this aviation direction. And that was after college. So I consider it late in the game, but I, you can start no matter when I get students who are all ages, um, 
40s, 50s, 60s. They've always wanted to fly since they were a kid. Uh, I started late, but that doesn't mean it's too late for anybody. And so you grew up in an aviation family. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My dad has been engulfed in aviation for a long time. And uh, he, he made to made made us see that it was a whole nother world out there. A lot of people aren't lucky enough to see the benefits and the travel and the fun you can have with that world. And, and we were really lucky from an early age. I mean, what your dad, he also does uh, acrobatic flying and things like that. I mean, talk a little bit mm-hmm. about his, his, what, what he does in the aviation field. Sure. Yeah. He started as a uh, kind of a career pilot. He worked for the airlines for a, a brief amount of time until 2001. And uh, some significant aviation acts happened in 2001, which scared people out of the industry and regulated a lot more stuff. So it was not a good time to be a pilot in the airlines. And um, he got out of that and moved back to Union City full time, not out on the road all the time, and joined in with my granddad, Steve Vaughn, in Vaughn Electric. And all that time, he was still doing aviation as a hobby mostly getting into that competitive aerobatic scene where they're up doing the, the complex tricks and maneuvers and, and uh, making them look good for people. And it stayed as a, as ma- mainly a hobby for the uh, remainder of the last 20 years. And um, it's more of a collector and a fun flyer now. And a uh, discovery park of America connection uh, he's the one who flew the airplane here that is on display in the uh, hanging from our military gallery. So um, a, a lot of people still talk about that day for a lot of folks locally. Uh, the uh, airplane coming in was sort of a milestone of Discovery Park's development. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he flew it from Virginia Beach and I just remember the anticipation of waiting for him to get here. And we were out on the side of the road at, uh, at discovery park in front of the church actually. And they cleared off the road and, um, had their barricades and everything. And he just comes in, lands on the road, like it was normal and taxis up to discovery park. It was a really interesting site for union city for sure. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, uh, one of those things where you come around the corner Almost around every corner at Discovery Park, there's something that kind of takes your breath away. But that airplane is a a, a particular popular um, artifact on display. Mm-hmm. Stunning looks, and it also has history in Union City too. So, kind of ties back around. What um um was your first ride in an airplane? Oh, I probably don't remember my first one, but the first memorable one. Dad had a little two seat uh, stunt plane and. He always told me I was kind of a button pusher as a child, like uh, my my nephew, the second nephew that came along. He's similar. He's going and testing out the rigidity of things by jumping up and down on them and pressing all the buttons he can and, and moving everything. And just he's a he's a wrecking ball. So probably not good for the inside of an airplane, but he took me up anyway. And I was sitting in the back seat, and uh, he said, OK, just hold the stick pretty much just want me to fly straight and level and and we started diving down naturally and uh he he starts to pull back and and i apparently see that as an opportunity to push harder and um so we're going down and he's like what are you doing back there and he's very animated and a great character but um apparently he found he looked back and i had uh both my feet up on the dash and pulling back as hard as I can or pushing forward as hard as I can. Something, something great like that, just to see if I could do it. And I could rival a a father at that moment. So I had some strength when I was a kid. Now you're, um, you are working, um, out of our local, um, airport here in, uh, Union City. It's a weekly county, O'Brien County, uh, partnership airport called the Everett Stewart Regional Airport. A lot of people listening did not even know there was an airport here in Union City. So, um, tell us a little bit more about, uh, that airport. And, f- you know, for those of us that don't fly a lot, you know, what's the benefit of having an airport here? Sure. Um, so it all, 
kind of arises around, you know, his, historically why there's an airport, I guess that's kind of where we can start. Um, there was a massive need for training uh, during the World War One, World War II time period. So um, a lot of the airports in the United States popped up due to that need for training and um, they've maintained since then, but they never would have been started if we didn't have such a need for pilots at the time. So uh, United States is the most densely airport populated uh, country in the world. And if you look at a map of, of just airports, um, you can't fly, uh, you know, around here, it's 10 miles without running into another airport. You got Paris, you got uh, Fulton uh, right up to the north. They're just everywhere. Um, and other countries don't really have that luxury that, that luxury at least for pilot's sake um so we kind of got founded because of that it was just a grass strip back in the day a big field that they could go fly those those steermen uh just like the one in discovery park and um it just remained and and has become what it is now which is i think a center of commerce uh for any county that an airport's in um it, it's opportunity for any businesses any factories uh, Titan Tire, just for one, Tyson, all of these places that have headquarters that are far away that that um, most of the, uh, the board members or whatever are going to fly a jet in to see that plant, to go visit, to meet with the managers, um, do their routine checkups. Uh, a lot of the times we'll see those big jets out there and not even realize who they're for in the county, even besides like these big names like Tyson and Titan. There's tons of tons of commercial jets that come in here. So it gives them an opportunity to come in here, but it also uh, is kind of vice versa. Having an airfield brings the opportunity of having those factories and making it easier for the, uh, the heads of those companies to come in and, and check on their baby, I guess. Um, so it's, it's twofold. I don't know. We get some leisure travelers here too, who, you know, are wanting to visit discovery park. And so they fly in and take a car and visit, you know, they, you guys there at the airport drop people off here frequently. So that's always appreciated. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then, uh, tell me about the Genesis of your actual, I guess, do I call it a flight school? Is that what it is? Uh, it's a little bit of everything. So the name is a little bit corny, but it's uh, full stop aviation. As in, we want to be a one-stop shop for everything in the airplane world, whether it's teaching people or getting someone into an airplane that they want, uh, maintaining that airplane. So maintenance is a huge deal on airplanes. We're flying airplanes that average around the 60s and 70s on the year model. So it's, um, uh, it's a lot more important to keep all the parts up and running uh, smoothly. Just like if you were driving around in a, you know, 69 Mustang all the time. And you had to go every a hundred miles to get maintenance done. It's, it's the same kind of deal. So we keep up on that. So everything remains safe. Um, now, when I, when I uh, was fortunate enough to visit you guys the other day, I saw some pretty cool um, airplanes and helicopters kind of all sitting around in your hangar. Uh, I heard a little bit, tell me a little bit more about what some of those were. If you remember what it was, I was looking at. Yeah, sure. It's, uh, so let's see, we've got a hangar packed right now. We just had the aerobatic unlimited or the unlimited aerobatic team come in for a uh, practice camp. So they hire a really well-renowned coach from France uh, named Coco. He's a funny guy. And uh, six or seven guys come out here and Coco watches them for a week straight and gives them pointers on what they're doing wrong while they're doing the, the aerobatics up in the, to the west side of the runway. And um, so there's a lot of those airplanes in here right now. Um, and those are mostly like extras, MXs, MX2s. If anybody wants to Google those aerobatic airplanes, MX or extra, and see some of those. Um, really cool, high-performance airplanes. They're so fun to look at, have wild paint jobs most of the time. Um, we've got a Huey one, UH-1H right now. So that's a 1963 model. Bell Huey, you know, the big Vietnam War, wop, 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 when it flies by, kind of helicopter is really cool. And we got a couple of race airplanes right now. Um, so the Reno Air Races are one of the 
the biggest races in the world, but especially the nation. And uh, you get really small airplanes, put really big motors on them and go as fast as you can. And uh, we've got two of those in the hangar right now doing maintenance and kind of test testing them, making sure everything's up to, to their specs at least. Okay, that's very cool. Um, I want to ask you more about aeronautics, and I'm going to do that right as soon as we get back from the break. Jiffy Steamer offers the world's finest clothing steamers, steaming products, and steamer accessories. They've been made in the USA since 1940 and now have more than 1,000 dealers across 55 countries. Jiffy Steamers are trusted by professionals such as Macy's, Neiman Marcus, Coach, and others. Find the Jiffy Steamer dealer closest to you at JiffySteamer.com. I hope you are enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please do us a favor and subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, I know you guys also do, obviously, uh, teach people how to fly. Luke, who's our producer, um, Luke, what, what made you decide that you wanted to take lessons and learn how to fly? I've always been... Uh, interested in aviation, but that's not anything new at all. Pretty much every pilot that's ever existed uh, probably has some story of wanting to be able to fly since they were a kid and whatnot. So um, I've known Connor and his dad, Mike, uh, all of my life. Uh, I've known Connor since I was a little bitty kid. So I was always used to seeing, you know, Mike flying aerobatics and doing all those things that uh maniacs do but uh like even as a kid like you don't think that being a pilot is something that you can actually do you don't think you know we think of pilots as like uh kind of like right next to astronauts in terms of something you can actually do so like i didn't see it as a possibility of something you, you could pursue or anything so uh the way that i actually got into it is my brother uh, lives in Nashville, and uh, f- probably six, seven years ago, uh, he got really into flight simulator or like flight simming. And he had a home simulator rig and all that. And he was doing that for a while and got really into it. So uh, I, I started doing it with him, with him teaching me how to do everything and, you know, show me what all I needed to do and get and all that. That way he could be in Nashville, I can be in West Tennessee, and we'd have you know, another hobby to bond over and whatnot. But anyway, we, we were doing that for a, a few years. And like in modern flight simulators, if you have like a, you know, a good home setup and you, you know, actually go through the time of learning everything, you can learn, you know, navigation, uh, radio communications, uh, emergency procedures, like systems of an airplane. Like you can learn pretty much everything. Uh, the only thing you can't do is, you know, obviously fill the airplane. But like after us doing that for, you know, probably thousands of hours. Um, you know, it clicked with me one day that I was like, nah, I'm, I'm going to give a pilot's license one day. That's, I'm, that's a bucket list item. So it ends up being a, a huge blessing or, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, like a perfect Goldilocks scenario that full stop exists and they exist so close. And then not only that, but, uh, as Connor was saying, there's a bunch of airports, but, uh, you know, Union City is uh, a hot spot of sorts in aviation uh, because of the aerobatic guys. And Union City, out of all the airports in the region, like has some of the coolest planes that come in and like some of the most interesting pilots. Uh, so there's just always something different going on. Uh, I, I've been hanging around like at the airport for years now and it literally every day you don't know like what you're going to see, uh, who's going to show up. So if anyone's like halfway interested in aviation, it's like a perfect storm. We have a special long uh, runway here in Union City. Yeah. Yeah, we do have that as well. And um, so that's that's thanks to probably a, a friend of Discovery Park as well. I imagine that, that he's seen g- good over there. Um, but Robert Kirkland was a uh, was a big traveler and he traveled in jets typically and uh, just need a big runway a lot of the times. So he petitioned or 
spoke loudly enough that everybody heard him that we needed a bigger runway out here at Union City Airport so he can, you know, do whatever Robert Kirkland needs to do. I, I don't even begin to know the man, but um, so he's he, he did a really good job and he got a nice, awesome, paved, beautiful runway for us to use uh, nowadays. Um, so it's just one more thing we can uh, attribute to Mr. Kirkland. So he left a big 20. legacy and a long runway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he would love yeah, to know his, that, that we're still remembering his runway. Yep. And he loved, yep. He was a, he was a good character from what I remember. I, I was at the opening of Discovery Park as well. Just met him briefly, but even as a kid, he was such a, a great soul and, and kind of loved uh, just interesting conversation, even as a kid, like he, he didn't see you as a kid. He just kind of joked around and, and uh, talked to you like an adult. It was interesting for, yeah, for a kid to see that. That's great. That's really great. Um, so Luke, you, you decided to uh, take uh, uh, lessons and become a pilot for those of us that have never uh, even started that kind of process, but there may be somebody listening who's interested, you know, what are the, what are the steps you went through and what was it like going, learning how to fly? Well, uh, I only have my experience, you know, being a student I mean, Connor's had, I don't know how many students and he's seen, you know, every type of student and every different situation. Um, Usually, if you're going to be a student, and this is the way it was for me, uh, it, which is you'll have a discovery flight. And a lot of flight schools, including full stop, uh, if you're wanting to get your license, then the flight school. Uh, and you, if you're smart, you should probably try to find out if you even like being in an airplane. Because that happens. Like, some people, you know, want to be a pilot. They think it's cool. They watch Top Gun and then they'll get up in an airplane and they'll find out I hate this this is terrible I want to be back on the ground yeah so some so people's bodies also react weird ways and uh, they can get motion sickness really easily and um, just not really match up to to the flying aspects and you yeah. made a good point Luke I bet you yeah. now that Top Gun is out and it's going to be a big hit uh, Connor's phone is going to be ringing off the hook with uh, people wanting to be Mavericks. After the original Top Gun release, like I think it was like the first six months after release was like the one of the biggest upticks in like pilot interest. Oh, so I, I tell you what, if I hadn't I hadn't already been a pilot and I saw Maverick because it's a really good movie, I definitely recommend going and seeing it, even if you don't like aviation. If I saw that movie and I wasn't a pilot, I'd be at this school right now, guaranteed. It was awesome. Great movie. Uh, your your first time up will uh, probably be a Discovery flight. And a, a Discovery flight is more than what you think it is. You'll be learning why the plane is even flying in the first place. Um, for anyone listening that is interested in physics, uh Planes don't fly for the reason that most people think they do. Basically, like if you've ever flown on an airliner, you don't actually know, you know, what all they're doing and what all they're thinking about. And but your next time up, uh, if you like it and you actually want to, you know, take lessons and, and whatnot, uh, your flight school will give you the rundown, the walkthrough, and everything that you have to do to be eligible to take uh, lessons, like. Then, you know, the paperwork and like getting a medical clearance because you have to you have to basically show to the FAA that you're not going to fall to pieces, you know, inside of an airplane. That's kind of important to them and us. And once that's done, uh, your your first lesson, uh, once you're up in the air, uh, you'll be flying the plane a little bit. My first lesson with Connor was uh all right, try to keep the plane straight and level. This is how you keep a plane straight and level. This is why the plane's not straight and level. And you'll you'll basically learn how to maneuver an airplane. And that will go on until you're good enough with that so you can move over into, you know, different types of maneuvers until uh, eventually you've progressed far enough that you can, you know, land an airplane. And are you like are you also that, like studying from a book? Yeah. 
so uh, flight training in the U.S., uh, the, the way it works for a private pilot is, uh, yeah, you have a, a written test. Uh, so basically they want to know, you know, that you actually understand the, you know, airspace, weather. Uh, so you're, you're kind of studying for that, like on your own and maybe with your instructor while you're also, you know, doing the actual flying portion. Men to anybody and Connor will too, before you start your flight training. If you're interested in aviation and you go take a discovery flight or whatever, go ahead and start studying for your written test. <laughs> go ahead and get your written test out of the way. Don't take your written test like a week before your like final flight exam. It will make it a ton easier on you and your instructor will appreciate it. There's- now, what is it? What is it? Let's just say that I have decided now that you guys have persuaded me and I just saw Top Gun and I want to be a pilot. What's the general cost what's it going to cost me we had a student uh this is the most accurate numbers i can give we had a student that graduated i guess got his license through the school um probably a month ago and it was at seventy four hundred dollars plus five hundred for the check ride so that's that last interview to actually certify you to get your license and that's not through us we go to go to memphis fly with a really smart guy and he determines whether you're good enough, which you will be at that point. But I'd say $8,000 is a safe bet once you spend the money on the program for studying, which there are yeah, plenty online and great programs. Do all the flight training in the air, all the ground training with us, and go take a check ride. Now, what if I just want to do the discovery flight? Discovery flight is... Um, you know, it, it kind of depends on how how uh, strong of a stomach you have as a discovery flight undertaker. Okay, so an hour in the air will be around two hundred dollars. Oh, that's awesome! I, I like that idea. An hour in the air. An hour in the air. It. An hour in the air. Yep. And an hour in the air. We'll do a podcast called "An Hour in the Air," and it's just muffled <laughs> muffled engine noises. Be a terrible one. And for anyone listening, an hour in the air when you've never flown feels like five hours. Yeah. So, thirty minutes, forty five minutes, usually is a good good discovery flight level. So, and it keeps it cheaper too. You get the basics, and uh, if the guy's really a thrill seeker, we can do an hour, and it's perfectly fine. I'm a thrill seeker, so I want I want the uh, and my birthday's coming up. I should have asked for that for my birthday. Yeah. Um, oh, we can take you about, something fun for your birthday. <laughs> so, Luke, I know that you uh, are now. I mean, I know that you're flying about. You know, like you know, going on. You know, going places in an airplane. Um, you know, if I if I wanted you to fly me to the Memphis airport, um, what would you charge me? I mean, not me. Obviously, you would fly me for free. But if we weren't friends, what would you charge me um, to fly me to Memphis? That's a great question. I, I'll uh, I'll prompt this one and then let yeah, Connor but, uh, help me out. If, but I did, if I did, I would uh, lose I my would, license. Uh, lose my license. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. No, I don't want you. To, I don't want to. If anybody's listening in, Luke is not going to fly me anywhere. <laughs> uh, but how much would a pilot like if I'm here and I got a meeting in Memphis? You know, roughly, what would it cost me to fly from from uh, our airport here to Memphis to that airport? Are Are you asking like if like me if I wanted to fly there, and you were just wanting to ride along, uh, or or are you asking like actually hiring? Let's say I got my license and I'm gonna fly my, fly my own plane. Yeah, gotcha. Well, a, a lot of that's gonna really depend on the type of plane that you're flying because most of your costs are gonna be in fuel. Like literally, I, I did a lot of my flight training training in a uh, Cessna 150. Uh, people can look that up if they want to. Uh, and, and and that plane burns about five gallons an hour. So you know, de- depending on the wind or whatever, which is which is not much, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not much fuel. It's like you're salt baying or dusting fuel into the carburetor. Sounds like a lot, but. but the the plane that I mainly fly now, which is a Piper Cherokee 180, you can look that up if you want to. Uh, it, it burns about ten, so you know, literally double. So for me to fly to Memphis right now, fuel prices are uh, what are they right now, Connor? Like five dollars fifty cents a gallon. Yep, pretty accurate. Yeah. So without me doing you know some quick arithmetic in my head right now, because you know I'm not a pilot. Of 
apparently. So yeah, $5, 50 cents a gallon and you'll burn, you know, 10 gallons an hour. And it's going to take you like 45 minutes to get there. So, mm. you know, wow. Yeah. So generally you're looking at like 200, 240 bucks gets up the faster you want to go. Uh, you can get a little less expensive if you want to go a little slower, but all things considered, Memphis is so close air wise and Nashville is so close. It's a hundred miles. And uh, so you'll get there in an hour and generally any airplane and you can go quite a bit quicker than that. So, yeah, I mean, you're, yeah. it, the time saving is what you got to think of when you get into the air. There are some Goldilocks situations, uh, you know, like he's saying, Nashville, you know, is so close. You really have to think about like how the roads are laid out because it may not actually be that many miles, like nautical miles in a straight line. Um, but on the road, you know, that may translate to a lot more miles. So like it, it, to Nashville, it's actually like somewhat comparable even with the, you know, terrible gas prices right now to, you know, me driving my four door sedan, you know, there and back. I am paying a premium, you know, flying a plane there rather than driving, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm getting there in like 45, 50 minutes versus, uh, you know, two hours, 45 minutes, three hours. And then, you know, you, traffic is a, a variable. Being able to do that alone, like opens up a door for you to be able to do completely different things. Like yeah, usually when you plan a trip to say like Nashville or Atlanta, you know, it's, you base everything around having to stay there or having to stay there multiple days. And like those cities, like in a plane, you know, you can, you can fly there. You can do whatever you like need to do, want to do work or whatever, and come back and still have the day back in the city that you just started in. And like, that's just, that's a completely different thing than, you know, being in a car. Yeah. If you've got meetings, I mean, I could see where, I mean, it's not that much more, especially if gas keeps, the price of gas keeps rising. It might end up being cheaper to fly. What about, um, let's talk a little bit about aerobatics. Um, sure. Connor, you say so your dad, I know is a big, um, um, aerobatics professional. Am I saying that right? Aerobatics? Uh, yeah. I don't know if there's a better term. <laughs> He's, he likes to fly upside down a lot. Right. So he does, he does a lot. He does, he participates in a lot of air shows and, um, do you, do you recall it? Do you do that as well? Yeah. Not me. Not that I'm against, I guess that, that thrill seeking mindset and kind of the, the flying and weird, you know, upright on inverted, whatever positions. Um, there's such a competitive drive with all these aerobatic pilots that, that really want to be good at aerobatic pilots and to control the plane in every aspect of flight that's their mindset going in but it gets down to they want to compete against other people and be better than them so aviation is one of this thing where the top dog wins and, and you got to be the best and you get a lot of really hungry people to do that and they're the nicest people in the world when they're not in the air and then they go they go uh, into alpha wolf mode and, and they're really strong individuals mainly so I have a competitive nature, just not towards flying and aerobatics. I, I love it as a passion and a hobby. And I've done some mild aerobatics and, and, uh, it's, it's a, it's a lot of fun the way I fly. It's like a gentleman's aerobatic thing where you're doing really slow loops and slow rolls and, and having fun with it. And, um, I don't, I don't see myself in the future going that deep into that world, but it, it is fun to dip my toes in every now and then. Well, for the record, I want to fly with you and not your dad when it comes to the aerobatics. So I went hey, to I slow don't... rolls and the, um, so he, he has done a lot of shows around here. I know, uh, the airport there in, um, in union city, Luke already mentioned a lot of, you know, notoriety for that. Um, you know, what are some of the shows that we have in this area that people might, who are interested in that might want to check out? So one coming up, I think it's the seven, the June 17th and 18th, um, and maybe the 19th. Uh, I've got to check my dates here. But uh, it's in Millington, Tennessee, so just north of Memphis, probably a, what is that, an hour and a half drive, two, two hours drive maybe. Um, there will be a ton of beautiful and really cool airplanes at that airport for an air show. 
Um, my dad will be there, but obviously there's a lot more reasons to go than just being, just seeing him. So it'll be cool. Um, so you'll have like blue angels. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. The most notorious aerobatic act in the world or, or air show act. And, and they're amazing. The precision. I, I mean, if you like top gun, th this is top gun in real life. These, these pilots are probably better than Maverick, honestly. Yeah, I bet because of the movie, as we said a while ago, th this event will have a lot more um, attendance even than usual. It's at the Millington Memphis Airport. That's not the Memphis International Airport, right? That's actually in Millington. Yes, um, yeah, absolutely. And, and it is June 18th and 19th. And whoever uh, sold sponsorships for this event did an amazing job because there are a lot of sponsors on this thing. Yep, yep. They have a really good marketing uh, team. Let's see, Mid South Air Show. If anybody wants to Google that as well, that'll get them there. MidSouthAirShow.com, and you can uh, buy tickets from there. It looks like we're not sponsors of Mid South Air Show. I will say <laughs> on the air, but um, and that's this coming up uh, weekend, the 18th and 19th, which is uh, the 19th is Father's Day. What a great Father's Day uh, experience for everybody out there. Um, I'm yeah. actually brightening this down. I think I may go check this out. This looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. And also, if you've never been to an air show, it gets really hot because uh, this is June and uh, there's also no places to sit most of the time. So make sure you bring a folding chair, um, an umbrella, maybe even if, if uh, you look like a, a bit weird or something like that. But the shade will be great for you. Trust me. Plenty of water, plenty of drinks, a cooler. It'll be worth it. And there's usually long walks. Are there food trucks? Oh, yeah, like yeah. There's truck. there's tons of food trucks, tons of um, you know places to get food and drink. So that'll be you know a plenty. Excellent. And bring your sunglasses because you're going to be staring at the sky. I sunglasses. was just gonna, <laughs> and you're you know you got to put some uh, sunblock on. Oh yeah. Look yeah, at that. yeah. Definitely bring the really high SPF sunblock so um if somebody's interested if we have sparked some inspiration in finding out how to uh uh get into the sky um how can they track you down we have a website and that's probably the easiest way to find us we've also got a facebook page at full stop aviation uh the website will be fs-aviation.com and they'll uh uh, pull it up and you can find a contact page at the top and call the flight training department. That's me. And I can put you in touch with the instructor. I don't do much instructing anymore. I kind of just touch on the weird stuff like tailwheel airplanes and, and high performance airplanes, just odd, odd off the wall stuff. But I've got two instructors that are working right now and having a fun time getting as much out or as many hours as they can in airline pilots in the future. So. I do want to add uh, one thing uh, to what Connor's talking about. If there's ever been a time in the past five, I don't know, um, like 40, 50 years that someone's ever been interested in being an actual working pilot, uh, now is it. There's a huge pilot shortage. Uh, pilots used to be paid pennies in comparison to what they're paid now. It, it's a long road. Uh, it's military-esque in that way. It's a big commitment, but if anyone was ever halfway interested in, you know, flying airliners or something like that, uh, if you were ever going to do it, now's the best time uh, as far as pay, as far as benefits, as far as, you know, stability, and be able to do a, a job that's, you know, interesting and is actually you know, has a purpose and is fulfilling. Go talk to Connor and them about that. Uh, it, it's an avenue that people completely forget about because, again, they associate it with, you know, being an astronaut. Yeah, that's that's a great point, Luke. And I bet if there's some young person out there or not even that young who's thinking about, you know, this career path that uh, the folks over there um, would be happy to talk to them and explain a little further. Yeah. Absolutely. Anybody that wants to, you know, go over the details of how that's possible or how to start, because it's a big path. Um, yeah, I'll gladly talk anybody through it because it's it's a great one as well and a really fulfilling uh, career, I think. Well, thanks for doing what you're doing out there at the airport. And thank you for being on our podcast today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Scott. And 
make sure you come see us for your birthday and we'll take you up and do some rolls and loops and stuff or, or straight and level, whatever you want to do. <laughs> that sounds good. And thank you, Luke, for uh, chiming in. It was uh, interesting to hear more about that aspect of your life. And thank you to all the listeners who've joined um, all of us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. 